this is how it all began. One morning, a dinosaur walked across the city. Good morning everyone, how you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now, usually I start the morning off in a cemetery, but today we're heading to the Isle of Wight and we're going to find the final resting place of Nicholas Dingley, nicknamed Razzle, who was a drummer in a rock band. I'll tell you more about him later and how he uh, had a very short-lived life and he died in a glamorous place, shall we say. But I'll tell you where, when, how later on. Um, yeah. If you haven't come to Portsmouth, this is it, the seafront, Spinnaker Tower up there somewhere. Uh, and down here, sorry if I'm making you dizzy, the Sunrise, and what's known as Eastney, that end. And of course, we've got the Isle of Wight over there. And I'm going by hovercraft today, I'm not going by the ferry. So um, I'll film a little bit inside of the hovercraft for you, but I will be quiet. I'm not going to start talking in there, make myself be very noisy first thing in the morning because people don't like it. See you soon. Hi everyone, so I have got a taxi to Binstead Holy Cross Church. I'll tell you a little bit more about Nick Dingley in a minute. Um, little quiet place, nice, look. But today is the 11th of November, so it's Remembrance Day, of course. So I'm gonna have to be really quick to get in there and do my filming and um, get out without being uh, disruptive at all. I am a little bit early so hopefully we won't catch anyone going in and out of the church. Um, let's get on with it shall we and I'll tell you a bit more about Nicholas Dingley. Nicholas Charles Dingley, 2nd of December 1960 to the 8th of December 1984, better known by his stage name Razzle, was the English drummer of Finnish glam rock band Hanoi Rocks. Born in Royal Leamington Spa, England to a young single mother Patricia Ingram who decided to give up her child for adoption. He was adopted by Henry and Irene Dingley, the family's only child. He grew up in Coventry, after which the family moved to the village of Binstead on the Isle of Wight, which is where we are now. Prior to joining Hanoi Rocks, Razzle started playing in local Binstead small ensembles, one of which was called the Finn Red Line. In 1980, he moved to London, where he played in several punk rock bands. Also, he joined Demon Preacher, featuring Nick Wade, later of Alien Sex Fiend, The Fuck Pigs, and The Dark, with whom he released one EP, The Living End, live in 1981, which was recorded at the band's last gig in London's 100 Club, which in his own words, was heavy punk, almost heavy metal. Razzle collaborated with Hanoi Vox for the first time on Sounds Magazine pages, after seeing the band performing at the Zigzag Club, Razzle was convinced that this was a band that he would definitely join. He came backstage and asked to be the band's drummer. Jip Casino, who was the band's current drummer, was fired for his addiction, depression and suicidal thoughts, and Razzle was hired. Although Razzle has already appeared on the Self Destruction Blues album cover, he didn't record anything on the record. He became an important element of Hanoi Rocks due to his repertoire and ability to find a way out of difficult times and problems between members of the band. Having a perpetual sense of humour, charismatic, Razzle was able to crack a joke in any situation. In 1983, Samoy Yaffa disclosed that he and Razzle were planning to leave the band, citing Andy McCoy's insufferable behaviour as the main course. In 1984, Razzle, along with the other members of Hanoi Rock, appeared on the first album by the punk band Fallen Angels, a project of Knox of the Vibrators at the time. Knox and Hanoi Vox shared the same manager. 
In late 1984, Hanoi Rocks were on their first American tour. Frontman Michael Monroe fractured his ankle, so the band had to skip a few gigs and take a break. During that break, Motley Crue's singer Vince Neil invited the band to visit his home in Redondo Beach, California. On the 8th of December, Hanoi Rocks band members were partying with Motley Crue at lead singer Vince Neil's house. The party stopped when everybody noticed they were out of beer. Neil and Razzle, both drunk, went to a nearby liquor store in Neil's Di Tommaso Pantera, with Neil driving. On the way back, they crashed into another car. Razzle was rushed to hospital and pronounced dead at 7.12pm. He had died instantly in the collision. Both occupants of the other car were seriously injured, sustaining brain damage as a result of the crash. Vince Neil was charged with vehicular manslaughter and driving under the influence of alcohol in connection with the crash. His blood alcohol content was 0.17, well above the California legal limit at the time of 0.10. In September 1985, Los Angeles County Superior Court Judge Edward Hines Jr. sentenced Neil to 30 days in jail and five years probation. Andy McCoy and Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee went looking for Neil and Razzle. They drove past the crash site and saw Neil handcuffed and put into a police car. They were informed that Razzle had been taken to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. McCoy informed the band's manager, Seppo Festerenin, who then told the rest of the band. He was buried at the Holy Cross Church, Binstead, on the Isle of Wight in 1984. Neil dedicated Theatre of Pain, Motley Crue's third studio album, to Razzle. In 2005, Neil admitted to Ultimate Classic Rock that he had wrote a cheque for 2.5 million to the courts so he only ever served 19 days of a 30-day sentence for reckless driving. Neil's account of this event, while contradictory to witnesses' accounts, is documented in the Motley Crue's 2001 autobiography, The Dirt, Confessions of the World's Most Notorious Rock Band. Max Milner portrayed Razzle in the 2009 adaptation. And of course, the obligatory... Ooh, the door is open. Let's go in. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hello. And there's um, obviously people in here, so uh, be respectful. Wow, what a beautiful church. I'm not going to stay too long because obviously people are talking before they have their service. Lovely little place. There's. So there you have all the information there. And what a sad, oh, you know, you can't put it into words, can you? What a waste of a life, just shy, or just over his 24th birthday. And yeah, I know drink driving is highlighted these days, but back in the 80s, people knew, but they were rock stars, you know, rock stars. We had this conversation before. They do this time and time again, don't they? They live on the edge. And sadly, um, he paid the ultimate price. Anyway, I think I found it. Now, I've watched the film, The Dirt, with Motley Crue and it's a brilliant film and it tells a great story of you know their rise to success and uh, but it's such a shame it really is that this young man um, lost his life let's, let's move all these leaves out of the way and in true rock and roll style like drumsticks alcohol <laughs> all right um Love and memory of Nicholas Charles Dingley. Died December the 9th, 1984. Aged 24 years, RIP. Wow. Now, whether you're a rock fan or not, um, try watching the film The Dirt. It's... <laughs> You know, you have to have an open mind if you're not a rock fan. We know what rock stars get up to, and obviously it's all about the Motley Crue. But they do play, pay respects um, to Nick in the film. And um, I just want to say, I'm so sorry, Nick, that 
things went the way they did. Um, you look like an amazing character. All drummers have got something about them, haven't they? They look like they're just having a good time and they've all got that little sort of crazy glint in their eye. Um, so bless you, Nick. And, um, you know. It's always like uh, people get sort of overreacting and uh, really violent. And, you know, Here it is. This is our new live album. Lots of nice pickies inside. Good one of uh, me somewhere there. Just a scene. Thank you for your contribution to the music scene, even though it was very short-lived. And um, I don't know what else to say, really. You know, I, I say it time and time again when we see a lot of these uh, younger people that passed away. Um, we know how rock stars live. They live on the edge. They live hard. They live fast. Um, you know, and I should imagine it's part of the job, <laughs> so to speak. No one wants to die young, obviously. But a lot of them, when they get into that lifestyle and they live hard, they live fast, sadly, it's what can happen. Not in all, not in all cases, but, you know, it can. So keep smashing those drums. Um, thank you, as always, for watching, everyone. Uh, to the Isle of Wight, it was on my doorstep. And it was only when I started researching it and looking into it, I was like, wow. Um, such a shame, you know, from Hollywood out in um, America potentially living the dream, touring, at Motley Crue's house, partying. I suppose there's only one thing you can say to that. Don't party with Motley Crue, even to this day. Don't do it. Unless you've got that little twinkle in your eye. I'll see you all on the next one. Leave your comments down below, won't you? Go and watch a film, The Dirt. It's really good. I love it. And the book's even better. Take it easy. See you soon.